Unmatched is famous for having an extensive roster of playable characters, but with so many matchups available, it is extremely difficult to play them all. In this series, we will be analyzing a variety of matchups in detail and hopefully discover some hidden gems. Join me as we explore the latest matchup of the month. If you're a fan of the channel, consider supporting me on Patreon. For as little as $1 per month, you can help me continue to bring you premier unmatched content. Unlock exclusive rewards by becoming a patron today. What's up guys, Zero Skater here, and we're back for another matchup of the month for June, this time featuring Winter Soldier versus Daredevil. So it's going to be the battle to see who can truly go infinite. So this is a very exciting episode because theoretically the games could go on forever. Now I don't think that's actually going to happen because I think both players would have to be trying to make that happen. I do think one will end up killing the other because Winter Soldier can throw sixes and Daredevil can throw, you know, big attacks that can be blind boosted as well. So I don't think it's going to go infinite. At least we're going to try to not make it go infinite so this video doesn't last, you know, forever. And um, anyways, it's going to be fun to find out. So <laughs> If you missed the last episode, it was Squirrel Girl versus Sherlock Holmes, so that was a pretty surprising matchup um, where uh, a lower tier took on one of the top tiers, and it was actually pretty close. So definitely go check it out if you missed it, but I'm excited to get into this one today. So um, before we do, as always guys, be sure to attack the like button if you enjoy the video, and subscribe for more unmatched content. And with that said, let's not wait any longer, we will go and check out Winter Soldier versus Daredevil. All right, so here we are on Vorpal Board, as always, to check out our first fighter being the Winter Soldier. So he is one of the newer Marvel fighters to come out of the recent King and Country set, which is my favorite Marvel set for sure, though he was the one I was least excited for, so um, some people love him. He's very similar to Daredevil, our other fighter, but let's take a look. He is a solo fighter who is moved to, but he is ranged, so that's some decent stats um, with 15 starting health. That's respectable. His ability, though, is crazy. It's brainwashed, so effects on Winter Soldier cards cannot be cancelled. Now, that is very similar to Sherlock's ability, although a couple of Sherlock's cards can be cancelled because of the any cards. Winter Soldier, none of them can be cancelled, but none of those effects can be cancelled, and there are some detrimental effects in his deck that, even if fainted, will still go off, so that can be pretty bad at times. But um, overall, it's an extremely powerful ability, especially with his ability to go infinite, as we will see in just a little bit. So let's take a look at his cards. The first one, I wanted to start off with the schemes because a boy named Bucky says ignore any star effects on your cards for the rest of your turn, and you gain an action. So the star effects are those detrimental effects I mentioned, and they cannot be cancelled unless you play this scheme and then attack with one of those cards, and in that case it will be ignored. Keyword ignored, not cancelled. Um, but anyways, I wish they would have leaned a little bit harder into this aspect because I think it's a really cool aspect. It's a cool idea. It's just that the fact that um, a boy named Bucky doesn't seem to be impactful enough to really care to play it too often. And um, the detrimental effects aren't really bad enough to make you want to do that. So I wish they would have leaned a little bit harder into that um, dynamic, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. Um, and it is a 3 boost, which is very important to note. So the next card being Manipulation, another 3 boost. So the only 3 boosts you have are your schemes, which is very important. But Manipulation is easily one of the best cards in the deck, because it says draw until you have 5 cards in your hand. And then each opponent may draw up to 5 cards as well, but um, you don't really care if you're being like aggro down. A lot of the aggro fighters like T-Rex and Robin Hood or whatnot, they have a lot of draw power anyways. So they're probably attacking you and still keeping a relatively high hand size while you are going low because you have no draw power really outside of mainly this card, which is a scheme, not a combat card. There is one exception we'll get into, but anyways, you're probably getting pressured to a low hand count while they're keeping a mid to higher hand count. Manipulation is just going to let you draw up to 5, and that can save your life in an aggro matchup. And also, um, it's optional for your opponent, so if they're concerned about fatigue for whatever reason, they don't have to draw, um, but they almost always want to draw if given the chance with this, because 
if you are reloading your hand, they need to keep up the pressure. Um, now, this can be used as a pass if you have above five cards in hand, so that is also very important to remember it, because Winter Soldier oftentimes wants to go into fatigue. So, Manipulation, amazing card. One of the best, hands down. Now, Without Remorse is the first of the six value attacks. It's a printed six. It's just after combat. Your opponent may draw a card, so remember that can't be stopped unless you uh, play Bucky before leading into this attack. But um, it's a printed six, right? So you can deal some huge damage, and with three copies in the deck, a ranged six is very, very threatening. Our next card is going to be Bionic Arm, a two value printed, but says during combat, if Winter Soldier is adjacent to the opposing fighter, the value of this card is six instead. So it does bump up to a six, which again, three copies in the deck, that makes six sixes. That's pretty crazy as far as damage output goes. But with this one, after combat, your opponent can move each of their fighters up to five spaces. So that's a very huge amount of movement, and it's for every one of their fighters. So uh, you might get yourself pinned by using this, so you got to be careful of that, and you really have no way to escape a pin other than just fighting your way out, which is very, very important. Uh, the next card, we're going to see Marksman. Um, this is a very underwhelming card because it says during combat add plus one to the value for each space between uh, Winter Soldier and the opposing fighter along the shortest path. Now, it can get up to some pretty crazy values on maps like Yukon, maybe Sherwood, um, Soho is a good one as well. It can easily get up to like a between a four and a six, I would say, on most maps. Um, but you really like who cares, right? You have enough sixes, I think, in the deck, and every time you attack with a six, there is an opportunity cost. Uh, as we'll see, because if you're trying to go infinite, this is not going to help you. And it's only a one boost, which is on the lower end of your boost values, which is also pretty unfortunate. So this card, most often than not, is a bait attack or just a throwaway to an overdraw or some kind of discard effect or a boost or whatever it may be. So not that great, but it's pretty interesting effect. Uh, the next one, this card is absolutely terrible because it's a four value attack that says after combat, if you won the combat, you take two damage. Now, Winter Soldier only has 15 starting health. He has no scheme healing, so um, his healing can be stopped. And so you really don't want to be dealing yourself damage. This is pretty much just a blank four with downside. Uh, at best, it's a blank four if they full value block it. But why throw a four when you could throw a six? Or you could use your recycling card instead. Uh, this card is just awful in every sense the only thing that keeps it uh, somewhat useful is the two value boost which you can use to boost your movement because you don't have a ton of higher boost values so this is the best case um, to use for a boost so uh, pretty forgettable card but this card is crazy so complete the mission it's a three value blue two boost um, during combat you may boost this card and then after combat you deal damage to the opposing fighter equal to the damage you took now there's three copies of this, which makes it very reliable to find one, and uh, it's just crazy. It can be upwards of a six value block if you boost it with your schemes. And remember, this cannot be canceled, so it will always be that high of a block. That's just crazy. Um, after combat, you can also just choose to not boost it, and it's like a skin like Titanium from Luke's deck, where you deal damage to yourself, you deal damage to them as well, equal to that damage, so it, it's an even trade. Uh, and sometimes if you're just trying to kill the opponent, you will take those trades. I think most often you're going to end up boosting this so you don't take damage because, again, your health is a valuable resource for Winter Soldier. Um, he doesn't have the most reliable healing, so you want to just preserve health as much as possible most of the time. But I have seen this card used to reflect the damage back and actually close out a game by attacking and killing the opponent so it's definitely something to look out for and the versatility of this card to do either one of those two things makes it absolutely incredible one of the best defenses in the game next card this is what makes winter soldier such a menace because it's reprogram it's a two value versatile two boost value but you're almost never going to boost with this it says after combat choose three cards in your discard pile and shuffle them into your deck so this is the recursion this is the reason he can go infinite because it cannot be fainted unlike daredevil who can have his devil of hell's kitchen fainted and stop the recursion you can never stop it from winter soldier well there are a few exceptions like trash talk if he attacks with a reprogram into luke's trash talk that will end the turn before this card will do its uh effect and there's some niche like scenarios like that, but for the most part, you can't stop reprogram. You could try to randomly discard it from his hand with something like an ambush, 
Um, you could try and steal it from his deck with Black Panther. Um, you can try and do chosen discards like Sherlock's Eliminate the Impossible, but those are very few and far between and limited to specific characters who can even go for that. And a lot of times it's just pure RNG as to whether you can even do anything about it anyways. Um, and because it can't be canceled with a feint, this is just almost guaranteed to keep you going infinite. Now, the thing is with this card is what people don't consider is that it's only a two value block. So again, your health is very valuable. So if you want to defend with reprogram, you're probably taking a good chunk of damage in order to do so. So it's a trade-off, right? And if you're attacking with reprogram, well, it's an opportunity cost because you're throwing an attack, which is an action taken that's not moving you away from your opponent and drawing a card, which could be a valuable defense. And also you're throwing a defense in order to get that cycle. Granted, it's only a two value defense, but it's a defense nonetheless. So there is a huge opportunity cost to attack with the reprogram and to defend with the reprogram. So even though he can theoretically go infinite, it's not as reliable as you might think. But in the right situation, it can be very, very deadly. So it's just a, a neat um, dynamic that this character has. So let's move on to the last few cards. Um, faint, standard faint, three copies in the deck. Pretty crazy when it can be recurred in matchups like Sinbad and the like, where you really need a lot of cancels. That's pretty insane. Uh, next card, Born in the Barracks, one of the most impactful cards in the deck. So it's very much going to impact the game because it says three value versatile after combat. If you won the combat, Winter Soldier recovers two health. So this is his only source of healing, and it's conditional upon winning a combat with a three value card, which is not easy to do. It's almost never going to win on offense. Um, unless you attack into a feint, because your effects can't be cancelled, so it will win the combat over a feint, and that's great. But I think most opponents know not to defend with feints against Winter Soldier because of both this and the sixes punishing you really hard, and the feint doesn't stop the reprogram anyways, so why would you ever do that? You usually attack with feints. But again, you can use this card on defense, and if you catch a feint being used on offense, then you get your two healing because this, again, can't be cancelled. So, um... It's huge. The impact of this card is just massive because it's a world of difference. If the opponent, let's say, hits you with a 5 value attack, you defend with barracks, you take 2 damage. Now, if it was a 2 value attack instead, you would attack and you defend with barracks and then you would gain 2. So that's like a difference of 4 health. It's a 4 health swing of attacking with a bait attack into barracks or a 5 into barracks. And so that's just so, so impactful. Now, you could bait attack into complete the mission, and you're happy. But if you throw a 5 into complete the mission, you're very sad because it gets full blocked. So, the coin flips that this card creates is just insane. And it makes Winter Soldier pretty frustrating to deal with, um, with for certain fighters especially, and in like certain game states. So, this is always a card to look out for, but if you can get this to trigger as Winter Soldier, your chance of winning is going to skyrocket. Now, a couple more cards. Reflex Memories, 5 value versatile is insane, right? A printed 5 versatile, I think that's the first time we've ever seen this in the game. Uh, that's just crazy. And it says, after combat, discard 2 random cards, then draw 2 cards. Now, that seems like a pretty sketchy downside, which can't be cancelled, because you might lose some of your best cards, and then replace them with garbage when you draw the 2 new cards. But the smart thing to do with this card is wait till you are a very low hand count. You have, let's say two or one card left in hand they attack you you defend with this it's great five value block that's awesome you discard one or zero cards and then you're going to draw two new cards so you save this card till your last defense in hand and then you play this and hopefully you can even plus cards off of it so that would turn the downside of this card into an upside because not only are you plussing cards if you only discard one and you draw two but you're likely discarding one red card and drawing two new cards which could be defense cards so reflex memories is absolutely insane it's so so good and the fact that that downside turns into an upside is just ridiculous so crazy crazy card especially because you can recur this with reprograms and last but not least we have wily fighting it's not the best card in the deck but it's not the worst um it's a three value versatile which is a defense that's respectable it will deal an auto damage uh, to melee fighters almost always and um, sometimes you can get it to trigger against ranged fighters as well if you defend, if you're like in a pocket, right? Um, but Wily Fighting, it's not the best defense, so most of the time you want to be defending with Complete the Mission or Reflex Memories, or maybe Born in the Barracks. So Wily is kind of like the worst defense in that case, and it's not the best attack either. So it's kind of mediocre, but sometimes the auto damage adds up, and 
any defense is better than no defense. So pre you're pretty okay having a Wily in your deck. But that is Winter Soldier for you. Um, I talked for quite a while about this guy, but there's a lot to dive into. He's a very, very complex character um, when you want to play him optimally. Like some people might say, oh, you just run away constantly and you go infinite. But again, I promise you it's not that easy. You need to be really good with positioning in order to do that. You need to be really good with hand management. You need to be really good at... Um, Preserving your health and making the right calls in combat, depending on the situation, uh, because you can't always just, you know, defend with reprogram. You're taking too much damage, um, and you can't just always use complete the mission because if you use all of those up really quick, well, you're gonna have to get a cycle in at some point in order to have a chance at drawing those again, which means you either defend with the reprogram or you attack with it, and you got to attack at the right time, and it's just it's a lot more complex uh, than people give him credit for. I will say that. So. Yeah, you can go infinite, and it's way easier in certain matchups, but it's by no means uh, a surefire win condition. So uh, sometimes you really need to just kill your opponent. And um, we're going to be going into a matchup where the opponent can also go infinite, being Daredevil. So um, it's going to be very interesting how to navigate this one. But that is Winter Soldier in a nutshell. Let's jump on over and talk about our next fighter, being Daredevil. All right, so next up we have Daredevil, another one of the Marvel fighters out of the Hell's Kitchen box, and he was the first one known to be able to go infinite in the game, um, reliably, I should say, because Luke Cage theoretically could, but pretty much Daredevil was the first infinite character, and people lost their minds when this character was released. Everyone was in an uproar. They were like, oh my gosh, how could you make a fighter that was more broken than Sherlock? This breaks the game, blah, blah, blah. It was uh, madness, but... Things have settled down, the dust has settled, and we've seen that uh, Daredevil is not nearly as much of a menace as we may have thought at first glance. Now, he still can go infinite theoretically, but he's not so crazy he has his weaknesses. So let's take a look at Daredevil. He is a move 3 solo fighter, so he's got an extra movement up on Winter Soldier, but he's melee, whereas Winter Soldier is ranged. So he does have 17 starting health, which is pretty dang tanky. So, during combat, Daredevil can, it says, if you have two or fewer cards in hand, you may blind boost your attack or defense. If you have other during combat effects, you choose the order. Because um, if you, something like Momentous Shift, or he has a similar effect where it changes the value to something, you can choose to do that effect first and then blind boost or vice versa. But anyways, um, that normally doesn't really matter much about the order, but... The big thing is if you have two or fewer cards, offense or defense, you can blind boost. And a reminder, blind boost means you discard the top card of your deck and you add its boost value to the blind boost value, right? So um, this is really crazy to be able to do on defense because we've seen a couple of fighters who can really hit really hard, like kind of King Arthur style, you know, he can boost his attacks to bump him up but nobody's really been able to do that on defense so that is pretty crazy so let's take a look at his first card being the devil of hell's kitchen so uh four value attack during combat if you have no cards in your deck the value of this card is eight instead now that's a massive attack for a single card but you got to have an empty deck in order to do it so it's very situational more importantly after combat shuffle this card and the top four cards of your discard pile into your deck now that is just crazy recursion, right? Five cards, and one of them is guaranteed to be this card you're attacking with, which means you can do it again and again. It's just insane, right? It's so, so crazy. But uh, Daredevil is one of the first fighters with a lower deck size than your standard 30. He only has 22 cards in his deck, I believe. Or was that Electra who has 22? Let's count. We have sets of 3 here times 4. That's 12 plus 6, 18. Yeah, 22 for Daredevil. So he's missing 8 cards out of his starting deck size in comparison to the other fighters in the roster. And so you really need to get probably at least 2 Devils off to even equal like a normal deck size because of the amount you're blind boosting and whatnot as well. Um, you really need to get off 2 Devils to, to be on par. Now, um, you do have some passes in this deck, which is very good, but you're going to have to get this card off if you want to win. 
Um, but being able to have an 8 value attack at the end of the game can be an amazing finisher as well. So this card really just does it all. This is what Daredevil is all about. It's the focus of the deck. It's crazy good, and you're going to want to use this over and over and over again. So let's get into the rest of the deck. The next card is a 2 value red Man Without Fear. During combat, you may blind boost this attack. This is in addition to any blind boost from Daredevil's special ability. It's just clarifying that. So in theory, you could blind boost this twice in a single attack, once for the card effect, once for his ability. And if you hit three value boosts both times, this can bump up to an eight. But that's super unlikely and it's super risky. And really, this card is mainly used as a bait attack or used for its three value boost because the only three boosts in your deck are this and the devil. So those are pretty scarce and they definitely come in handy in certain times, not just for like hoping to get lucky and blind boost it, um, but for your movement. Because if you can only move five max on certain maps or certain situations, it really, really hinders you. So the three boost is really important here. Um, but yeah, it's a good bait attack as well, because if they feign it, cool. I mean, you could use your ability still and hit for true damage with whatever you blind boost over the feint. Uh, if you're, of course, at two or less cards in hand. But you're pretty happy if your opponent feints this most of the time, except Winter Soldier, who might be able to feint infinitely. So in that case, eh, it's not so good anymore. But let's move on. Our next card is Son of a Boxer. It's a three value blue. After combat, if you lost the combat, deal two damage to a fighter adjacent to Daredevil. Important to note, this, this is just a fighter adjacent to him it's not the fighter who dealt him the damage so that can come up in other matchups of course it won't matter here because it's solo versus solo but just important to keep in mind in general if you're a daredevil player but you do have to lose the combat to have this trigger so if they bait into this then no damage is reflected back and that feels pretty bad but as long as they attack with a four or higher you're gonna deal two damage back to them that's a good trade and then the next card is Faint, your standard Faint. You have three copies, that's great to have. But very important to note, this Faint is only a one boost, and it's the only card in Daredevil's entire deck that only has a one boost value. Everything else is a two, except for the reds, which are threes. So that's really important, because you're going to have to play the odds at times when playing this character, and you want to know, you know, what are the chances that I hit uh, the certain damage threshold or the certain defense threshold that I need to live or kill the opponent, um, and you're going to have to think about these feints because this can absolutely screw you over if you hit this with a blind boost at the wrong time. But it's great to have feints, so happy to see them in the deck. Next card is going to be Grappling Hook. So, 3 value versatile after combat, move Daredevil up to 2 spaces. Now, 2 spaces is not a lot of movement, but oftentimes it's enough to close the gap against a ranged fighter if you play this on defense and you're in like a smallish zone and then you can move adjacent to them so that you are ready to attack them as your first action which is amazing for daredevil because not only could you throw the devil of hell's kitchen get your cycle off and then run away out of their zone probably with your move three but if you need to you could attack twice and one of them is probably a bait attack and one is probably the devil and it can put your opponent in some awkward situations where they really got to make a tough call and try to line up their cancel into the devil and not the bait attack. So grappling hook is actually surprisingly good. It In very many matchups, in very many situations, this card is really good actually. So doesn't seem like much, but grappling hook is great. Next card, Take a Knee, is incredible. Oh my gosh, a 3-value versatile says after combat, discard the top card of your deck, so essentially blind boosting, and you recover health equal to its boost value. So, wow. Um, that is a great effect, especially when you can hit something with man, like man Without Fear, which is the 3-boost. It's basically a bait attack, so to lose a mediocre card off of your deck and heal 3 is such a good trade. You will take that all day, every day. Um, losing a devil, less good, but sometimes you don't need all of your devils, and the three healing can be absolutely crucial. And not to mention, this card can be boosted on defense if you're playing at a low hand count, so it could be like a five value defense that also heals you probably two health, which is just insane, right? That's a crazy, crazy defense. This is just ridiculous. Now, it's not optional the discard off the top of your deck is mandatory so it is going to be milling your deck a little bit and sometimes that can ruin you like if you only have one devil left and you need to get a cycle off and you, your take a knee hits your final devil well you're not recycling anymore you're not going infinite you're 
it's been cut off and you will probably just fatigue out and lose. So there's some risk to this card, but if you manage your hand and your deck well, you can pretty well optimize when you play this and minimize that risk, and this card is just incredible overall. Let's go on to the schemes. So through adversity, move Daredevil up to four spaces. He may move through opposing fighters, and you deal one damage to each opposing fighter Daredevil moves through. So this is like a stallion charge from Yananga, but in a scheme form. Or it's like Ghost Rider using his special ability with the Hellfire. This card's crazy, right? It's a pass, for one thing, which is amazing. It's auto damage, which is also amazing. It lets you escape pins, which otherwise you couldn't, and that can be really brutal as a solo fighter. So this lets you escape pins. And it helps you deal with annoying one-health sidekicks in those matchups where they can get in the way. So this card just has so much utility. It's actually really, really, really good. It can also be used just to close the gap if they are in boost maneuver range and you don't want to boost. Um, maybe you don't want to draw a card from your deck, so you just play this as your first action. You close that gap to get adjacent, and then you're ready to make an attack. And because you didn't have to maneuver and draw a card, this helps you manipulate your hand count so that now maybe you're able to blind boost an attack that you otherwise couldn't have if you were forced to maneuver as your first action. So crazy, crazy amount of utility with this card. It's so, so good. And uh, two boost value is pretty good as well. If you lose this to a blind boost, you're usually pretty okay because it's not a combat card. So it's not absolutely necessary in all um, circumstances, but wow, it's a good card. And last but not, definitely not least, is Breather. Now, this is a scheme that says choose an attack, defense, or versatile card from your discard pile and return it to your hand. So you're going to just use an action to swap your breather with a different card from your discard pile. Now, it does specify attack, defense, or versatile because it doesn't want you taking schemes back with this because otherwise you'd have an infinite loop where you could just breather, 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 breather over and over and never have to draw cards from your deck and just maybe fatigue your opponent out. It would be infinite passes, which would be really just stupid. Um, it would break the game, right? So they were good and they specified it has to be a combat card. Now, that doesn't make this card any less good because it's ridiculous. You can use three breathers and two devils. Um, most decks only have three feints, right? They can cancel three times in a game. And so if you breather back your Devil of Hell's Kitchen every time, well, that makes like five devils in your deck and they cannot all be canceled because there's only three feints. So that's just crazy, right? That's how you're going to usually guarantee you going infinite now it's again there's opportunity cost involved it's definitely not that simple to go infinite just like with winter soldier it's not that simple um, but in theory it could happen just depends on the game state and the matchup in particular but breather is really flexible too because you can also use it to grab back combat cards like faint if you're against um a uh, deck like maybe Yananga or Little Red where you really need to have those extra cancels um, to save your health. Or you can get back Take a Knee to heal out of a lethal range or more grappling hooks to, again, close the gap more often against range fighters. Like um, Sometimes you're going to be forced to take just defenses back with Breather because you are you don't have a ton of them quantity-wise like right off the bat unless you get your cycles going. Uh, so you might have to do that, and in that case, it gets a little sketchy because you might have to end your infinite chain with Devil, right, in order to survive. And so if the opponent is able to pressure you early and force breathers out to get defenses, then they're going to be able to maybe pivot their gameplay into, okay, now that I've forced out the breathers on defenses, a couple of them, maybe if I play my cards right, I can cut off his infinite by just now canceling the rest of the devils. So Daredevil has to be careful about that, and he's just really, really interesting to play against because of that. Um, there is so much to think about. You have to be really fundamentally good at the game to play against Daredevil, because He's going to make you have a really tough time if you don't have a solid understanding of things like initiative and tempo and a solid like fatigue game plan and solid positioning because you're going to have to consider his boost values, right? Like if he's in a certain end of the map and you're able to move far enough away to where he has to boost with a three boost, otherwise take a double maneuver or play one of his schemes, like... That can be really good for you as the opponent because, again, he doesn't have a lot of three boosts. So he can get around very easily because he's moved three and most of his boost values are twos, but there are times where you can exploit his movement. 
Um, so there's just so much that goes into Daredevil in every matchup. Um, so many fundamentals are going to be tested. He's a great character to practice against um, if you're a newer player and you want to get a solid grasp on all of those concepts for competitive unmatched. He's he's great. So I hated him at first. I absolutely despised him. I hated playing against him. I didn't want to play as him. I wanted nothing to do with him, but I've really come around and I still don't like to play as him very much. Um, but I have a lot of fun playing against him because like I said, it's just so dynamic and there's so much to think about at all times. It's really, really fun. But, um, yeah, he, again, he's going to have to get some cycles off if he wants to match deck size with a normal opponent. Um, you're going to have to be careful about your ability because blind boosting, although it can be great for high attack values or high defense values, it's milling through your deck, which means your cycles are even more important and you it's blind boosting it's random right so you could be losing the cards you really need like your breathers or your devils or whatever so um you there's going to be a lot of risk reward scenarios when playing any matchup with daredevil which a lot of people really enjoy so um against winter soldier though you know they can both go infinite so it's just going to be a crazy matchup but before we get into it let's just talk about a couple of the key card interactions that we will expect to see throughout this matchup all right so the first and maybe the most important interaction that we're going to see probably multiple times in the matchup is going to be daredevil attacking with devil of hell's kitchen into winter soldier playing faint because Faint, of course, is going to be the way Winter Soldier can try to cut off Daredevil from his going infinite with the cycling. But if Daredevil can keep a low hand count, and anytime he attacks with a Devil, if he has two or fewer other cards in hand, he's able to blind boost his attacks. So that means that he could blind boost up to a 7 value attack with Devil over the Faint, which would be 5 damage, which is insane. Now, the average boost value in Daredevil's deck is a 2, because remember, he only has 3 feints, which are 1s, and then he has the reds, which are um, the 3 boosts, but if you're attacking with a Devil, well, max amount of reds in deck you could have is 3, so you could have 3 feints, you could have 3 of the reds, um, but everything else is a 2. So you can reliably hit with Devil, boost it up with a 2, up to a 6, over a feint dealing 4 damage to Winter Soldier. Now, again, Winter Soldier having 15 starting health, if you did that three times um, and your Devils were canceled but you're hitting for big damage, then that is 12 out of his 15 health over the top of feints, right? So this is a huge interaction. It's very, very important. Yes, the cycling gets canceled, but that's potentially massive damage to Winter Soldier if Daredevil is able to stay at a low hand count and threaten the blind boosts. So Winter Soldier has to think twice be before he faints, and if he throws any other defense, like a complete the mission, let's say, yeah, he can mitigate the damage, but then Daredevil is getting his cycle, which is putting the Devil right back into the deck, along with a bunch of other valuable cards, most likely, and then you're going to have that same coin flippy interaction again later in the game. So Winter Soldier has to think twice about fainting, he's going to have to play very carefully, and if Daredevil is attacking when he has more than two cards in hand, so he cannot blind boost, I think that's going to be the best time for Winter Soldier to play his feints. But even then, two damage from a Devil over a feint is definitely impactful. So this is a huge, huge, very crucial interaction. We're probably going to see this a lot. All right, so next up I want to talk about, of course, Born in the Barracks, because, again, this is one of the most impactful cards for Winter Soldier in almost every matchup. So Winter Soldier has to figure out, how can I get this to trigger? Because if you cannot get this to trigger, well, you risk just dying before you're even able to go infinite. So it's pretty important most of the time. So um, I think it really, in this matchup, is going to depend on the hand count, right? So if Daredevil is not able to blind boost then these two red cards are the only cards that can potentially hit over barracks naturally. If you're trying to bait or you know hit with any of these other cards down here, the versatiles, and you're not able to blind boost, barracks is guaranteed to trigger, which is going to feel really bad. And even the Man Without Fear is not guaranteed to trigger uh, because you could blind boost that feint. There's always that chance that you hit the feint with your blind boost and you only go up to a three and then barracks triggers. So I think Daredevil is not going to want to 
bait attack, right? Especially if he cannot blind boost. So if he's got a high hand count, I think Daredevil only wants to attack probably with Devil of Hell's Kitchen. Maybe Man Without Fear if you're feeling risky and you really want to get a barracks out of there. But it could backfire if you hit the feint. I know that's unlikely, but it can happen. So it's something you have to think about. So barracks is going to be really sketchy. Um, if you attack with barracks, everything that Daredevil has to defend with is going to stop the barracks from winning, except for, of course, the feint. But I don't know why Daredevil would ever attack with or defend with a feint, especially in this matchup, because of the healing, because of the sixes that can just deal him massive damage. So the feints are almost just dead cards uh, in the matchup. They're not good to attack with. They're not good to defend with. They're one boost values, they're basically useless garbage. But if it's your only defense left in hand, you might be forced to play it. Um, but then in that case, you're at least able to blind boost it, so it's not quite as garbage as it would be otherwise. But yeah, the, the barracks is going to be really important. Uh, it's going to be hard to get it to trigger for Winter Soldier. Um, and Daredevil could play some mind games by attacking when he has a high hand count, hoping that Winter Soldier throws the barracks in the hopes of catching one of these versatiles. And then that's when you throw your Devil, you win over the barracks, you deal a damage, and you get your cycle off, and you feel great. Now, uh, of course, everything can change with items with this card, because the item buff cannot be cancelled because his cards cannot be cancelled. So depending on the map, that could definitely change things with this card. But these interactions are definitely something to keep in mind. All right, a next thing that's going to be really important is Son of a Boxer. So just like Winter Soldier is trying to get Barracks to trigger, Daredevil is trying to get Boxer to trigger because uh, I think Winter Soldier can go infinite more reliably since his can't be canceled. So Daredevil probably has to kill Winter Soldier with damage and Boxer could be a huge help. Now, first of all, it only works for adjacency, right? So you're going to have to force pocket scenarios where if Werner Soldier wants to attack you, he's going to have to end adjacent to you. Also, you have to lose the combat. So you may be expecting, you know, without remorse or bionic arm, both of the sixes coming out from Winter Soldier. And if he's adjacent, that's a great time to throw the boxer because if you take three damage, he takes two damage. Yeah, you're taking more, but I think it's a pretty favorable trade for you overall because your healing is much more reliable. Uh, because take a knee is not reliant um, on winning the combat. So because of that and your higher starting health, you will happily take the trade if you can deal the two damage back to him. The problem, of course, lies when he attacks with reprogram instead. So he is able to bait out boxers by attacking with a low two value attack. And then he also is getting his cycle of three cards. So that is huge. Um, so the number of times Boxer is able to trigger is definitely going to change the game. I think Winter Soldier, if he's adjacent, probably wants to only attack with Reprogram and not throw the sixes because of that threat. But I don't know. It depends on how well the infinite gameplay goes for him, right? If he's just able to outlast, cool. But that might be really hard because Daredevil can, like I said, with the Devil attacks over the feints, put a ton of damage in so in that case maybe winter soldier has to flip it around and actually kill daredevil i don't really know yet we're gonna find out but in that case maybe you're happy taking that trade because you get to deal three damage over the top um but then of course if daredevil is able to blind boost his boxer it could go up to a five and the six will only deal one damage to him and meanwhile he will reflect two damage back in that case it's a terrible trade for winter soldier so He's going to have to be careful, you know, whenever he's adjacent, he's going to have to be careful about Son of a Boxer, and Reprogram is an amazing bait uh, to hit through that and not take any damage. And the last interaction I want to point out is the interaction between Complete the Mission and Devil of Hell's Kitchen. So, um, Devil of Hell's Kitchen, if you have no cards in your deck, the value of this card is an 8 instead. That is mandatory. You don't get to choose and say, nah, I'll keep it at a 4. So... Um, if Winter Soldier needs to kill Daredevil, this could be a great source of reflect damage because, again, you can boost it to save your own health, 
But depending on where the health totals are at and how the game is gone, if Daredevil gets to an empty deck scenario, he's almost always going to be attacking with Devil, right? Because if it's not Devil, then he's going to end up taking fatigue damage when he maneuvers on his subsequent turns with no cards in deck, and that's really brutal. So it's almost always going to be a Devil whenever he's attacking with an empty deck. So you know it's an 8 value attack coming. Now, if Complete the Mission is defended against an 8, you're each going to take 5. Now, if Winter Soldier dies in that combat and Daredevil also dies, Daredevil wins the game because you're both dead at the same combat and the active player or the turn player wins. So Daredevil was the one attacking, Daredevil would win in the case of a, quote, tie, which is not really a tie. But if Winter Soldier is at, let's say, 6 health and Daredevil attacks and Daredevil's at 5 health, Winter Soldier will win because, of course, he'll go down to 1, Daredevil will go to 0, Winter Soldier wins. But the more likely scenario is that you're both at a relatively higher health total, maybe a mid health total, let's say. And let's say you're at um, like 10 each or so. Maybe you're at even 8 health each, right? So Daredevil hits, it's going to be an 8. You play complete the mission, you go down to 3 each. Now, because you didn't die, and it's now your turn, and he's ending adjacent to you, most likely, because that was probably his last action, to maneuver in and attack, now you could double attack him, and your attacks are massive. This is where those sixes are really going to come into play, because if you can turn around and double six him, yes, he just got cards back in deck that if he's at a low hand count, he can blind boost, but even with a blind boost, his defenses probably don't match up to a six. So if he's at 3 health, maybe you can hit with a 6, he plays a defense, he blind boosts, and he met, he hits a 5, so you deal 1 damage, now he's at 2. Well now he's only got one single card in hand, right? And if it's not a defense, you just hit him again, and he's dead, because he's at 2 health. If it is a defense, okay, let's say you hit with another 6, let's say he blind boosts again, okay, now he takes a damage still, so he's down to 1 health, no cards in hand. Now keep in mind, if he couldn't blind boost any of these defenses, then you just win right there with the double sixes, guaranteed, because your first six will just lethal him. Um, so if he could blind boost both, that means he had two cards in hand, they were both defenses, and now he blind boosted two out of his five cards that he cycled, so maybe he cut off his devil cycle now, and he's at three cards in deck, no cards in hand, one health, right, most likely. Uh, and that's just crazy. That's a huge amount of pressure. So yeah, you're at three health, but he's at one with like absolutely nothing. So um, there are scenarios where your complete the mission can be played purposefully into an eight value devil attack and get Daredevil down to a lethal threshold where you are able to just lethal him with sixes or at least threaten that and make him scared and that can definitely turn the game in your favor so it's a very kind of niche scenario because the devil has to be an eight value otherwise daredevil can just keep it at a four to a three be happy getting one damage and getting his cycle and that feels bad for winter soldier but if it's an eight value devil everything could change so definitely something to look out for when it gets towards the end of the game all right so that's about going to wrap it up for the analysis on this one and Overall, it's just such a dynamic matchup. It's crazy. It, it's there, it's so intricate, and you really got to have a solid understanding of all the fundamentals of Unmatched because they can both go infinite on each other. So it's all about like maximizing the efficiency of your of your damage, basically, right? It's about who can get the most healing and damage off and keep their health total high enough to where they're going to end up killing their opponent first, but both of them have damage that can be dealt back to the opponent when they defend. Both of them have potentially huge value attacks for offense. Both of them have the infinite recursion. Um, it's just insane. Um, it's a really, really cool matchup, and I think off the bat, it seems like Daredevil has to kill Winter Soldier because he may get his chain canceled first, but then again... Um, just the amount of damage that devil attacks can do over feints if Winter Soldier is canceling them puts him at a very dangerous amount of health, I believe, unless he can get off barracks, which is not going to be easy. So therefore, I think Winter Soldier probably has to fight back and kill Daredevil. And so 
in that case, it's not really about going into fatigue so much as it is just forcing initiative onto the opponent to have to come in and approach you because being a range fighter, if Daredevil can force Winter Soldier to come in and be adjacent in order to attack, he can get double attack opportunities, which can be massive. Um, but then if Winter Soldier is able to force the initiative on Daredevil, well, then he might be able to, you know, attack first and then move away, second action, and that's kiting, you know, with advantage, and that can be really good. Um, Winter Soldier has a bigger deck size to start off with, so Daredevil is going to start the game with the initiative for sure, but that can change as the game goes on. Um, and it, I think the sooner Daredevil can get cycles, the better, because once you're at kind of even footing with Winter Soldier in terms of the deck count, you do have a lot more passes than he does, so you may force the initiative on him, and then he might have to come in and uh, approach you, so that can be a big turning point. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It's just going to be a really interesting matchup. It's really hard to say who's going to be favored in this one. It seems pretty dang even. Um, my instinct would tell me Winter Soldier right off the bat just because of easier cycling, but who knows in reality. So I can't wait to get into this one. Let's stop talking. We'll jump on into Vorpal Board with Chad and see what happens between Winter Soldier and Daredevil. All right, you ready to do this? Let's do this. All right. Welcome everybody to matchup of the month for June and this time we got two Marvel fighters going up against each other We have Daredevil and Winter Soldier uh, We're gonna find out who can truly go infinite here because both of them are kind of infamous for that ability to just Recycle all of their discard pile into their deck and never uh, exhaust but uh, I don't know this is gonna be interesting Chad um, Obviously, you are uh, a Daredevil expert, and um, what are you thinking about this matchup? Yeah, so uh, so I played this matchup a, a handful of times, uh, just kind of curious uh, to hear, because this is one where, right, I think there, uh, previously there was one matchup that could go infinite, and it was uh, Daredevil Luke, but both players have to be, like, coordinating and stuff. Here, I think it's a similar thing where you can go infinite, but I think the Winter Soldier player has to be not recurring faints and like, you know, like there has to be a number of things going right for, I think, um, for it to go infinite. So I was just curious um, and I'm very excited to see this one. I think Daredevil has to play very untraditionally uh, Daredevil, um, especially since three of his uh, only 12 defenses, right? Daredevil only has 12 defenses, and three of those are useless, <laughs> uh, right? Um, and they don't even have decent boost values uh, if he happens to hit them with a blind oh, boost. The so, faints. Um, that really hurts him with those faints. So, very curious to, to try it out. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's uh, from my test, it's a pretty close uh, matchup, um, but. You know, those were just a handful of tests early in the Winter Soldier kind of craze. So we'll sure. see what happens. Yeah, so Winter Soldier, he can cycle on defense as well, right? And Daredevil has the initiative off the bat because of his lower deck size. So I think it is easier for Winter Soldier to cycle as well as his is reliable. It can't be fainted like Daredevil's can. So yeah, Daredevil probably has to focus on damage output more so than recursion, I would assume. Um, and he can do that pretty well, I think, with Boxer, right? Because that's probably a 3-2 to two trade, which is not favorable for Daredevil. But I do think his healing is more reliable. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe he can uh, take those trades happily and use take a knee to heal. Whereas Winter Soldier is going to have a hard time healing any of that. And he's got a lower starting health. So I do think Daredevil can probably close it out with damage. But uh, we'll see. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Um, so who do you want to play first? I think I'll play Winter Soldier. Okay. All right. I'll take the Daredevil. I hate playing Daredevil. <laughs> I've only played him probably like, I don't know, maybe twice in my entire life. And wow. I knew you did like him, but I didn't know you'd played him that few yeah, times. Yeah. I actually never, ever play him. Um, wow. I don't think I've played him in any competitive games either. Uh, yeah. I know we, when we work. Oh, I think I lost you. Hold on. So yeah, there was blood everywhere, and then you know it just it was crazy, dude. And then fell out of the sky, and dude, yeah, I just was... missed everything you just said. Yeah, so that was last weekend, <laughs> uh, and then this. <laughs> 
no so uh <laughs> so yeah so i i forgot what i was saying but i was i think i was talking about when you and i try and work on our drafts you either yeah. draft in such a way that you have a lineup you're comfortable taking into daredevil um and that's basically it i think yeah, yeah. so generally you 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 have a pretty good lineup to take into daredevil and you you practice in such a way of, or like you know in arsenal which has been recent like when to take him um to ban him out or yeah. you're happy to have taken him away from the opponent and you just don't assign him right yeah i never play him um i think i've gotten really good at playing against him because i've played so many games with you as daredevil uh so i'm good into him so hopefully that'll translate and i'll be able to pilot him well but we'll see it might be different on the other end yeah, it helps be one of the best players in the world. I think that should help you out a little. A we'll little see. Bit, maybe. I hope so. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Winter Soldier's new, right? So, like, I don't have. I've only played, I think, one game ever with Winter Soldier as well. So, I'm super new on both of these fighters. I know you've played Winter Soldier a bit more than I have. Um, and he seems like in a similar vein to Daredevil, you know, similar play style and whatnot. So, um, he can hit really hard if he needs to, but he can also cycle. Um, so you're probably better off here. So maybe you can scoop up some free points here. <laughs> hey, yeah, we'll see. It's not a competition though. Right. No, we don't care. We don't keep track at all. You're only, <laughs> you know, like four points behind. That's okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So what are we you thinking care, on maps? I think between the two of us, who cares the most? It's Mike. Of course. <laughs> Cause he just wants to be able to make fun of you. I know, dude. When we were at Origins, he just kept bringing up how I got 3 0 in, in finals. I'm like, Jeez, Mike. Okay. <laughs> Let it go. I know. I'm like, I've also beaten Bo Bjorn every time I've played him. Yeah, with who's lost to Bjorn every time? Hmm? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Uh, all right, so what are you thinking on maps? I have no insight here. So, so um, from what I've seen, uh, just from my experience, Boxers is huge for Daredevil. Mm -hmm. Like, really good, and he kind of needs to rely on that. And even the threat of it often makes a Winter Soldier kind of lose an opportunity to, like, get a quick attack off and then run away, uh, which is huge. And because he's only got, he's got pretty bad boost values and just a move of two, if he moves first and then attacks and gets grappling, uh, then he might have to worry about uh, double attack, especially considering he has no after combat movement mm -hmm. effects. Uh, so I think a map that might have a pocket or two uh, could definitely help Daredevil out. Now, whether or not we want to kind of lean into that, that's kind of a question. So I would say probably not like Hero Lot, which okay. is just like really bad for ranged, okay. but also not like Sherwood. Sure. Um, I think I think we kind of want to mix it up uh, if we can. Okay. Um let's see something like um we don't dare go to the new map do we um we could i've found it's it's pretty interesting because winter soldier loves the the tokens um but early game daredevil doesn't really need the you know like he's just trying to get defenses out so he's not really hitting you for damage so sure. there could kind of be that back and forth um, but also the two damage one is very interesting. So mm. kind of works up either way. So uh, I, we did it with cloak and dagger, Bruce, right? Like yeah. The back. So I'm I'm down to run it if you want to. Uh, sure, let's try it. Why not? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Maximum insanity. That's right. I feel like the place your fighter in any space will be helpful for you. Definitely could. This is fascinating. This is chilling here. So if I want to camp on this, you literally say you can't get out because Winter Soldier has no ways to escape a pin. Oh, man, that's awesome. I love that placement of that item right there. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's huge so for you, cool. I think. Now, both of us don't really have too much card draw. I have some card draw, but my card draw gives you card draw. <laughs> so really interesting here, I think, because of that. Uh, I will, of course, be going first fascinating on the 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 emp pulse because that gets you down to a low hand count really early true and i don't necessarily want that <laughs> that's pretty cool or maybe i do i'm not giving you strategy yeah don't give it away yet you got to get your points first <laughs> 
all about the point. Oh, that's all that matters. That's the only thing that matters. Who cares about teaching people on Mac? Yeah, the whole reason we do this series is to keep track of our points. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the idea of like months down the line, you've just changed it to who's better instead of Magic of the Month. <laughs> Change the title of the series. <laughs> Skip all the deck reviews and the intro stuff okay. and just go right to who's better. I love it. No, we just have the trash talk thing that we did at, like, the last tournament. Mm -hmm. Just between you and me, like, every episode. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Man, I have no idea what I'm doing. But, you know, as is tradition. <laughs> we'll mulligan that away. If you want to see that garbage. I think I, I want... Like it. You kind of like it? Well, I already messed up. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, uh, because uh, through adversities are great damage onto me. And um, they're great ways to naturally get down to lower cards without, like, maneuvering boosting, which... True. Sometimes feels like a waste. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um. Okay. Well, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's Good luck. It. Have fun. Yeah. That's good. You too. All right. I'll maneuver. Maneuver again. And it'll be your turn. Okay. Um. The EMP is a little spooky. I'm going to maneuver. I'll maneuver again. Maybe I go to the token, though. It's hard, because if I go to the rocket pack to set up, if you boost onto the gun, you can blast me for a plus two. That's not cool. But then, you end, but then you end adjacent. So I don't know that I care that much about that. So I'll end there. You can go. I'll pop it. Yeah. So we discard in secret. Um. Yep, so discarding two. Let's go one and two. Ready? Look at that garbage. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's funny, dude. Okay. All right, so my turn. Think about, I, I, uh, I I'm move. gonna move. I yep. think. You have three movement, mm -hmm. so you could get to me normally. Do I care? What that that would let me use this. That could be nice. You don't need a jetpack. What are you thinking? So you could one, two, three, four, five. You could get that. I feel like I got to worry about that. Oh, though. yeah. <laughs> That's why I was okay with you going here. Because I was like, I'll just swoop around and zap him. Sure, I'll, I'll stay there. Okay. Uh, What do I want to do then? I can go zap you, I guess. I will maneuver. I'll attack. Hmm. Let's do a willy. Willie, I'll go one, two, and it's your turn. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I stay. Then you could zap me. I don't want that. So we'll go one, two. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Good placement. I'll maneuver. Let's maneuver again. I think I'll stay there. Go. Okay. I will maneuver. Mm -hmm. I think I can't back off. Like, I have to keep approaching. So, one, two, three. What's adversity? One, two, three, four. You're up. Okay. Forgot I have to keep track of my <laughs> the order of my discard pile. So, let me do this. Okay, of course, do it backwards. We're not gonna, we can't do that. No, then the stream can't see. Oh, sorry. That's okay, they don't need to see. <laughs> That's fine, like that, fine. Maneuver. It's part of my strat, you know, I gotta do it backwards so that my opponent can't easily see the cards, but I can, because I'm used to looking at them like that. That's right, yeah, <laughs> tricky. Gotta take every advantage I can get. 
Let me think about this. If I attack you, I put you down to four. I'm okay with that. Then you attack me. Can't blind boost. Then you attack me, and then you can blind boost. Let's go here. And I'll attack you. It's gonna be a six, huh? I mean, it might not be, but I have to try. Yep. So I'll take three. Mm hmm. One, two, three. And you can go wherever you want. Um, I can't move through people, right? Just moving five. Correct. Okay. Um, I'm cool where I'm at, actually. Okay. I'll attack. Okay. There's two. Yeah. And then I'll maneuver. And you can go. I'll maneuver. Maneuver again. And we'll discard this. Mm -hmm. Alright, you're up. Alright, I will maneuver. Uh, you're way too far away. One, two, three. Ooh, you got pizza. Is that pizza? Yes, sir. Oh, lucky. You're losing now. I know. <laughs> Dang it. I'm uh, getting some flies, though, so I might, might relocate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dang flies. All right, what do I do here? I will just maneuver again, I guess. All right, I am going to relocate. Okay, no problem. Apologies. All good. Let's go here. And you can go whenever you're done relocating. Apologies. It's going well. John's getting trounced. No. <laughs> Let's maneuver. Let's go here. And let's attack you. Uh, dang it. That Take sucks. A of this and a boy named Bucky. Program. This is a nice pocket, though. It is. Very nice. I will attack. Again? Come on! Ugh. Fine. I think I will... Maneuver. Yeah, your turn. Let's attack you with the token. Oh no! You negated my scheme! Oh, I meant to use my token, but oh well. <laughs> nice! Rip. I mean, you still would have won over it, but... Yeah. Okay, my turn. I will mm -hmm. maneuver and zap you. Your turn. We'll maneuver. I will boost with this. Because I don't feel like I need the actual, like, it's a good defense, but. Yeah, you don't really need. Yeah, I'm sure you have plenty. Uh, I'll attack you with this with the token. course yep okay this is going terribly um I will adversity okay. and breather the devil your turn Breathing the devil, huh? Let's start. 
the maneuver. Let's maneuver again. I'll boost with a six. Mm -hmm. All right, you're up. Okay, I'll maneuver, boost with take a knee. Mm -hmm. And I will attack you with devil. <laughs> I'll use the token. Okay. What a scumbag. I'll blind boost it. <laughs> Better a damage than a dead card, I say. Right. <laughs> you always say that. <laughs> Go ahead. Two cards, huh? Yeah, two cards. Two devils One of them in the could be a pile. boxer. Could be. The other one could be a scheme so that you attack me twice and kill me. That's right. It could be. I will maneuver again. Let's go here, and it'll be your turn. Okay. I'll maneuver, and I'll breather my devil. Dang it, dude. Your turn. One of these days, I'll get a cycle off. Maybe. I'll maneuver. I'll boost with this. Mm-hmm. And I will attack you. <sighs> Did have it. Blind boost or no? Uh, definitely no blind boost. And I draw a card, yeah? Uh, One, if two, you would three. like. Yeah, give me a card. Hmm, yeah. My bad. That was a big misplay, I think. I forgot about the card draw. That That's the misplay part. Card draw is very nice. Um, Because now you can blind boost both of these. I will attack. First action? Mm -hmm. Let's throw this. Every time, man. Every time. We're blind boosting this. That goes first, then that. Um, I'll maneuver. You can go. Mm-hmm. Let's maneuver. Let's maneuver again. And it'll be your turn. Hmm. I'll maneuver. And I will breathe the devil. I think I have confirmed lethal, do I not? No. No? What am I missing? Mm -hmm. Everything. <laughs> Everything? Maybe I'm just dumb, I don't know. <laughs> I don't play these guys. <laughs> Maneuver. Oh, I see. In the two turns, right? No. No? No. Okay. Maneuver again. Let's ditch one of these. And one of these. Oh, you can boost up to a six. Crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. I'm going to use the rocket pack. I'm going to go here. Actually here, why not? I'm going to shuffle up my hand and attack with an unknown card. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my cycle, you scum. <laughs> Finally. So you take two, I take two? Mm-hmm. And then I get to shuffle back. One, two, three, four. I think you have it no matter what because of adversity. Adversity is very good. That and the devil itself. Oops, sorry. Thief. Okay, your turn. Yep, you win. <laughs> good game. Can you kill me? 
I can't because you can blind boost twice. Well, will it matter? Yeah, yes, it should. It should. All right, max I can hit you for is, uh, well, this, which would let you move. Yeah, that's um, two it. Two sixes. Um, and so if you blind boost for four, you only take four. Mm -hmm. It was because uh, of this I token. didn't have to take the two. <laughs> because if I had been able to position in a way where you could, or force you to have to use your adversity to get to me, that works too. Yeah. But I think position in such a way where you can't do it, so it was that. So I feel like I should have ended here, but you were here, so you threw adversity through me here. And then you maneuver, but then you take two. So you'd have to, is this, yeah, this is able to target everywhere you escape through third adversity. So I think if I had taken it, I would have won. Anyway, uh, we'll throw this. Mm-hmm. We will attack you. I have to defend. It's a uh, five. I let's see if I take three, then that puts me down to three. And then can I die on my next one? Yeah, no. No, because you don't have a faint and you're dead. Yeah, I don't have a faint. I mean, I'll still blind boost. You should blind boost both of these. There's health no differential. <laughs> yeah. So I take one. Take one, and I'll attack you again. And I will defend again. And GG. I will find boost. So I take one, well, and then. I will through adversity. Yeah. One, two. Oh, man. Big game. Holy cow. <laughs> that was so close, dude. That was. I felt like I was doing so poorly in the beginning, but the faint, the damage from the devils over the faints actually mattered. Like, oh, that was it's huge, good. right? Especially because you could blind boost a couple times, and I couldn't figure out a way to make you have to not. Yeah. Like, blind boosting on offense is so good here. Mm-hmm. Wow. I think you only made those attacks into me, right? And a grappling early. Yeah. That was it. Grappling. Yep, yep. Um, I, th I thought that I messed up big time because I kept giving you free healing with the tokens. I was like, crap, I didn't think about this. Um, yeah. so that was massive. Uh, and I thought that lost me the game, but I guess I had enough damage to close it. Yeah. I'm not really sure where, well, the scary thing was the eight, right? That was the yeah, scary thing. Yeah, exactly. Cause once it's eight, I mean, you're taking two minimum. I should have aggressed. A little more there at the end, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, because I only had two feints left for defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You ended here, though. And I was here. And so I didn't want to go up here, attack you, you faint, right? And then um, you breathe her back your devil. You still have one card in deck. You attack with the devil. I throw whatever, and you blind boost it, so it's still an eight. An eight, and then adversity. And then, uh, and then, well, you can't adversity that turn, but because um, you have to breather, breather. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Um, but then uh, I'm in a worrisome spot. That said, then you only have two, one defense, right? One then you defense, only have the faint. which is the faint. So I think, well, and if you blind boosted in order to do eight damage to me, you might have lost your other faint. Yeah. Um, so I would have been able. So yeah, I, I think right here when I just ran, I should have pressured. I also had a number of three boosts. Um, in hand that I had, yeah. Um, yeah, I so had you like could have made both it to my here. draws and my thing, so I could have gone here. I just thought it, I thought I had it. Um, wait, was I here? I wasn't here. You were here, I? the try. I was here. So it'd be yeah. five one, two, three, four, five to over here. Yep, so I should have done that, or just go here and pop that. Uh, to go like, yeah, here. Um, yeah, and then because, uh, well, I mean, you didn't need it there at the end, the two from fatigue. Right. Would've yeah, because I would have taken two from fatigue and boost. I would have had to boost with my faint though. Like I couldn't afford to lose cards right. at that point. You're right. Yeah. It, I mean, this was this is what did it. You had exactly yeah. enough cards to survive. <laughs> yeah. Because if you if you didn't have one more defense, I think I kill you. Mm -hmm. um, For sure. If you didn't have the through adversity, I still survive. Um. Well, I mean, this one. I guess you maneuver, attack, blind boost. But I could have. One, depending on what I had in right, the end, which right. you didn't know, right? So, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, honestly, I just threw the game there at the end. I think I, I was winning the whole game, and I had it. Uh, I just uh, didn't I didn't math out, like, all the potential end game scenarios, yeah. which I should have. Yeah, I agree. I think you had it. Um, yeah. so. But now... Yeah, I, I generally think that Daredevil needs to just 
be blind boosting everything in order to to like win this so you were lucky that with like your blind boost you didn't hit any devils or uh, devils breathers. or breathers because if you hit a breather it would have been uh gg yeah what did i hit a knee which was fine i hit a faint hit which a was knee, a faint. fine and i think that those were the two that was that it. blind boosted yeah yeah yep yeah the tokens though were interesting so i think you'll be able to make better use of the tokens than i did like playing around maybe the the offensive healing because that's huge Yep, yep, yep. So, all right, well, let's flip it around, and you get to play your boy this time. Man, now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> uh, I will keep. I will mulligan. Hmm. I always keep if I have defense. Oh, program? <laughs> oh defense. Uh, I feel like Daredevil's not super aggressive, though. I don't need like a bunch of defense. Maybe that's a mistake. I don't know. I'm ready when you are. Yeah, all right. Sounds good. I'll maneuver. Boost. Whoa, dude. Calm down. I will attack you. What are you doing to me? Oh my gosh. Why does this have to happen to me? There is no way I ever expected you to do that. And after mulliganing away my last hand, now I'm so upset. Oh my gosh, dude. This is ridiculous. Oh, all right. At least I only take one. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> there's not really a different scenario there, I think. Another one of these into a devil. I think I go here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Man, that sucked. Um, I'll maneuver. So I just need to live, right? Is that my goal here? No, because you canceled all of my devils. Like, I might not line up the feints into all those. So I feel like I'm going to have to attack you. You're going to go to that dang EMP next turn. I know it. Me? Yeah. Oh, no. You just told me you had garbage in your hand. Why would I, <laughs> why would just I do that? Just to keep it a low hand count. Because if I, like, run to this purple item, you're just going to be like, okay, I'll go EMP. That's fair. Uh, but I think I... I have to do that anyways because there's nowhere else I can go one two three four like either of these spots are bad because I give you a plus two on offense and I literally can't go anywhere else like uh, unless I want to stay in this little black zone but that seems bad so I'll go one two I'll maneuver again go here and you can go let's maneuver I will attack you um, this is probably a devil, because you like to be sneaky and throw early devils before you get max cycle, just because it's something. So I'm going to use the plus one and use a Wily. Ah, I knew it. I think it's a good play, though. I agree with it. Nice. Okay. Um, four in hand. So uh, this is a turn where I think I want to double maneuver so that you have to boost or use like double schemes to stay in boostable range. So you're up. Ooh, not for the damage? Interesting. I'm trying something fun. Okay, all right. I want to attack him. Oh, blind boostable, huh? I will not will be not boosting. Boost. Okay, so I discard two, roll a d6. And another d6, re-roll on a six. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> wow. Okay. Not what I want to see. Yeah, no. I'll go here. All right, and then I draw two. I will maneuver. 
I'll go one and I will attack. Yep. This, this, and this. And your turn. Mm hmm. Maneuver. Maneuver again. Yep. Call me crazy, but I feel like the underdog in this matchup, dude. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know how you feel about it, but the damage hurts. Well, I'll maneuver. But see, like, I think in our matchup, I fainted all your devils. That hurt me more than it helped me, right? I, don't, I mean, I'm not worried about fatiguing, right? So I don't really care about you getting those off necessarily if I can but like, stay alive longer. Yeah, but if you keep, like, if Daredevil keeps cycling and not fatiguing and, like, it's a stalemate. Eventually, it's going to get fainted, right? It has to. Yeah, you have to fail, faint at some point. Yeah, or sure. else the adversities start to build up, and you just keep running through me with adversity for auto. That's like, a, Yeah, the adversities. That I hadn't considered adversities. That's a good point. Yeah, I think at some point, I think it has to happen, and this feels tough. Like, <laughs> I can't really pressure you. It's so bad. Um, I guess I'll maneuver there, and I will... Make an attack. With the token? You're defending with the token. So I will get the only three cards I have. You're seeing all the reprograms early. Yes. Yes. But, but it like doesn't progress my game state. No at all. healing left <laughs> almost. Go ahead. That's my goal. Yeah, the more you can use the tokens, yeah, just use them up so I can't heal. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Come here, and I will attack you. Dang, this is not good. All right, uh, I will blind boost. Mm -hmm. Faint, 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 faint. Yes, we got him. <laughs> you take one. Yep, you take one. I take one, and then I hopefully heal it. Heal both of them. Faint, 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 faint. Ah. You're okay with that. Okay, right, here. my turn. Yeah. You have two in hand. I will attack. I yeah, will do this. Ha! Got him. No, I lost my face. Got him. I'll maneuver. Here, go ahead. Maneuver. Maneuver again. Go here, your turn. I will maneuver. Let's EMP. Mm -hmm. I don't see how I win this, Graham. What? Well, John, I have seven defenses in my discard pile. <laughs> That's pretty nice. <laughs> I'm trying to EMP you. I know it keeps you at low hand, but like, I feel like you don't have options, right? Like, I might catch good stuff. Because you're just at the mercy of whatever you drew here. Yeah. So that was pretty good. A breather and a knee, I'll take that. Maneuver. I'll take that knee. I will attack you with this one. I have to faint here. Yeah. So you're at a six, I take four. Mm -hmm. Ouch. I'll attack. Take. Ooh. If I ditch these two, I draw two more. Mm, not what I wanted. I was debating attacking with this, actually. <laughs> I figured you'd take, though, and I didn't want to take two. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure why you'd ever attack with that, right? Just to get damage so I could do another attack with the other one and actually plus one card by attacking with the five second, right, when I only had one more card in hand. Yeah, I think you're in a dangerous spot. I'll maneuver. Go one, two, and you can go. Maneuver. Maneuver again. Here. Mm, I'll maneuver. 
go one, two, let's maneuver again. One, two, go ahead. Maneuver. Oh, I'll attack you. Ah, not great. I will, you are in blind boostable range. Mm -hmm. I'll attack. Staying there. Ooh. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get back two feints and reprogram. Mm -hmm. This is why I think it's a abysmal. Yeah, it's not looking great. Because you but can just cycle whatever. It seems hard to tell. So I attacked already. Then I'm going to rocket pack over to here your turn oh okay. wait no i can't do that i don't want to get pinned <laughs> i'll go over to here three four you can maneuver and boost but then you only have two cards in hand i'll go there maneuver maneuver mm -hmm. you're I'm scared to camp that. <laughs> I don't think I want to get pinned. But do I care if I get pinned? I don't know. It's hard to tell. I'll maneuver. I don't think you ever want to be next to a daredevil that can just yeah, blind boost everything. I, I agree. I think I just stay where I'm at and I'll maneuver again. You can go. Maneuver. I'll attack. Okay. No boost. Um, then we're just going to faint. All right. Take two. Take two. Uh, my turn. Mm -hmm. I will attack with plus two. I heal two. I'll stay there. And you take two. I'll maneuver. I'll end there. Go ahead. I'll maneuver. Either the devil. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I will maneuver. Maneuver again. I'll just go here and you can go. Maneuver. I'll attack you with this. I'll have us each take the one. What's my game plan now? I'm in a really tough spot right here. See, all of a sudden, man, the game has changed. Like, Yeah, you bring up a good point. I, I do crazy. think I was maybe whining a little too early. It was looking <laughs> really bad for me early, but, I mean, if you don't see the feints, right, you don't see the feints. Yeah, I didn't have it. So I would have 100% fainted there, of course, but I didn't have it. So what am I going to do? Oh... Uh... I think what I have to do is play this. Mm. And then we will make an attack. So you take three. Okay. I will and then you'll take three. heal three. Oof. Hate losing that though. Yeah, true. Dang it. Because I could have maneuvered into that. Yeah. This turn, and then gotten that. Um, and then now it was where I'm really debating going to the turret. You have no knees, no feints. You have two grapplings and a boxer. But you could only potentially have a boxer in hand right now. So you could breather and then hit me with a devil, but then you're like at no cards. All right, let's attack again. Dang it. Nice. Just keeping it as is. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping you weren't going to defend. The thing is, I'm at six. You're at six. So if I breather and attack you, you know... I know you either have breather and adversity. I, th I know you have breather and adversity, actually. Because I know the five cards that went into your deck, right? 
because I just double attacked, and so I know that in your deck is. Oh no, there, it, there was a turn in between there, huh? And then uh, an adversity or a. Uh, it's it's breather adversity and the red too. Those are the three options. It could two of those. So you know that I don't have defense if yeah, I do that. Right. I could blind boost it and hit you, which means that if you don't have a six in hand, I win. So it, because the devil is gone, that really stinks. I'm very happy about that. I think you have defense. If you don't have defense, I guess I just win. <laughs> so what are the odds? One, two, three, four, five, six. Dude, this is tough. Yeah, it's a close game, If I game, don't dude. win, getting that cycle is huge for me. Mm -hmm. That would put me at a good spot. If I double maneuver, you double maneuver, probably grabbing a faint. I think, right, if I double maneuver, you double maneuver, and you get a faint, I think I probably lose. Yeah. You only um, have one breather? No, you have two breathers. I don't know. No, wait. Um, you have two breathers left. Because you're at six health. Yeah. If only Dang, I didn't. Dude. If only I didn't know that you had no defense right here. You could adversity through me and then zap me with the turret for three damage, and then be like. Oh, I I was thinking about that, but I think at that point you're at a really dangerous spot. So you gotta attack me twice, I think. Yeah. Sorry, I'm taking so long. No, it, this is crucial. This is the game right here. Like, there's a lot of like weird little interactions, and it just comes down to crazy stuff like this. I'll maneuver. Breather. Tyler's in here now with my pizza. <laughs> Let me think real quick about where I want to go, I guess. So if you come up here, you could attack me. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'll do that. Yeah, you don't want to like end over here where I could end here and attack from range. Yeah. Mm, so you're in a pocket. No. Uh, I'm gonna maneuver to start. We'll see what I get and if that helps my decision. So I know you didn't have defense before. And now I know that you have a chance that you drew one of two grappling hooks. Two out of five. You had one card draw. So, if you didn't draw it and I hit you with a six, I win. If I back off, you're going to come in and hit me with a devil. You know, in my head, I'm like, well, what are the chances he drew one of his two grappling hooks? Well, it's already 100%, I know. So, that throws that out the window. <laughs> now, I have to think about, well, what if I double maneuver and back off to the laser turret and I force you to come in... Like, can I win from there? You maneuver, you attack with the devil, you can blind boost it. That hurts a lot. I think I'm in a bad spot if I go attack you. So I'm going to back off here. I'm going to maneuver again, and you can go. This is a pretty good daredevil map. I'll attack you. I don't disagree. I mean, this can only be devil. Or it can be the two. It could be the red two, but... It's not a defense, that's for sure. Well, it could be, actually. You could grappling to jump to the little purple spot. But if I faint the grappling, expecting a devil, you only deal one, you don't get away, so that kind of sucks for you. So I don't think it's a grappling hook. You can't blind boost. So every time we're throwing this. Hmm. I have a knee and a, a devil back. This is rough. Alright, so now you drew two cards, five of them. There was two grappling hooks. So what are the chances you got both the grapplings? Well, there's a good chance you got one grappling. I can zap you for two. And then I could smack you. 
but you can blind boost, which is not great. I'm going to laser turret you, first of all. Mm -hmm. I will attack. Do you want to move? No. No? All right, we're going to get faint. We're going to get... Uh, we're past the point of faint helping me. Um, we want damage. So we want something like Wily, six. Wily, Wily, six. That seems good. Yeah, let's get those. All right, your turn. Let's attack you. Let's do this. Got a lot of uh, blind boost options here. <laughs> you might kill yourself. <laughs> I'm waiting on you. Oh, I have to go first? Oh, that's right. Um, sorry. Um, why would I blind boost? Then I, because if you blind boost too much, you can kill yourself. Like, if you do it once, you're likely to go up to a four, which is one damage each. And then if I, you do it twice, you're likely to kill yourself, actually, by going to a six and not killing me. So, no, I won't boost. Mm hmm. I'll maneuver. Mm hmm. Your turn. Okay, I'll maneuver. Dude, so many cards in your deck. What happened? <laughs> And maneuver. Uh, your turn. I'll maneuver. Mm. Okay. My turn. Mm -hmm. I'll maneuver. I think I just don't want to give you a free adversity. The only spot I can really go is over here. I'll maneuver again. And uh, I don't want to get pinned. Dude. I don't fine. know. It seems like you really do. I'll go there. Go ahead. That is free adversity range. I know. Just... I know. Well, I don't have it, so don't worry. Good. <laughs> maneuver. Maneuver again. Your turn. Okay. Oh, well, wait. Nope. You're Sorry. Good. You're good. You probably you want to stay at the hand. Happened. You want to stay at the hand, Count. Yep. You have to you. be able Sorry. to blind boost, or otherwise you just die. That does put you in a little bit of a tough spot. I should have thought about that before maneuvering again. Go ahead. You want to scheme or something instead? Let me think. Yeah, let me... You could attack. I mean... Come in and hit me. Sorry about that. It's all good. Go here and I'll attack you. Just edit that out. <laughs> yeah. That would have been rough. <laughs> um, you can blind boost here. Mm. Let me, you could, let you me could hit win. that three. You could win. Don't win here. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Okay, I'm at one. Oof. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have. Well, I should have definitely since I have an adversity. Okay. But uh, I would have gotten an extra devil in. An All extra right. devil in? Uh, yeah, of what I recurred. Oh. Yeah. Well, shouldn't this recur? Oops. <laughs> this one for sure. Yeah. The other one, yeah, yeah, I just missed it. Alright, you're up. Okay. You have all the defenses now, dang it. Oh! Okay. Well, I just died to adversity, so there's no way I'm getting healing. I died to a blind boosted attack, so this is my last turn. So, we're gonna pop the best card in the deck. The card that may save me. Dude, dang. The well, if you have this, uh, for save sure. Save me. 
Oh, okay. I'll attack. I don't think you have two sixes. Because of your hesitation. <laughs> so. Could have a marksman, a reprogram, or the four. Well, not the four. Ben, I think this is a 50 50, but uh, we'll I just think so do this. too. No! Yes! <laughs> right. We got him. Let's hit him again. GG. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dang it. Well done, sir. I should have taken it. I called it out even. Oh. Man. Oh, you had the six. Why did... Oh, you just uh, thought I had Grappling hook. Grappling hook. Oh, Blind yeah. Blind boost a grappling hook. You take one, you get away, and I can't attack you again, and then you come in and kill me. Ooh. So I would have I lived if I had taken the first one. Wow. I gone down to one. Well, three. wait. I would have gone down to one and actually take five, so I wouldn't have won. Right. Yeah, you'd have to hit the six here. I have to hit the three. Yeah, so that's why I thought the faint was pretty safe. Uh, I was just hoping you didn't have two defenses. Of all my scheming, I still lost. Barely, dude. <laughs> but yeah, there was actually really good odds of me hitting a three boost. Yeah, and I almost just died. Yep. So, wow. And this yeah. was literally yeah, my last turn. I had in there at that point, I think, when I was trying to hit the three to kill you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt like I had to go in there because I, I had my adversity. I could have blind. I could have just boosted it to stay in the middle and just get rid of my adversity. And then on that next turn, I'm staying where I'm at, and I have devil in hand. I maneuver, hope I get another defense, um, and then attack with the devil. Do kind of a similar thing that we did, so that I have two defenses. Um, but I think you could have made it so that I had to boost to get to you. So then it would have been really tricky, um, <laughs> which I could have done, but I would have had to get with a breather. Um, and then if you play like a decent defense, like uh, you play the five or uh, this one, um, then I'm not actually doing any damage and I just lost my, it's a devil. Uh, well, devil recurs itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what I was worried about. It just buys us more time, right? Like then it just keeps the game <laughs> going. On. Dude, this matchup is insane. It's very fun. It is super fun. Like I can't believe how much fun this matchup was. Like. This is unmatched right here. Like, this to me feels like the control decks of like yes. uh, in like like classic TCG games. Yes. Both of them because both of them have recursion, right? So it's like, okay, what do I want back? And like I the, so a glimpse into my hand early game, I was just not seeing stuff the red cards that I wanted early and these and adversities were buried, which generally suck because you don't want these clogging up your hand um, right. if you can avoid it mm -hmm. um, when I attacked with one here it was like okay if you if you throw this I'm fine I just don't attack and then I go up here and you're at one card and there's no way you maneuver boost and just risk it all there right. uh, on me not trying to defense because if I did you're at five I maneuver into a three I attack blind boost it and you die so yeah. there's no way you do that and then i happen to get this out which really helped me out um actually because uh yeah you had like uh no defenses really other than faint and you couldn't throw faint so you had to throw this mm -hmm. yeah exactly um, so i was really happy with that dude i was so scared at the end here uh there were so many opportunities where if you just double attacked me i was dead like <laughs> yeah yeah turn... I, was, I was trying to figure that out and I wasn't having my grapplings at the time that I wanted them to threaten that, mm -hmm. you know, where like, uh, where I like end here or something or here and you like, cause this zone, wherever you're at, unless I'm here, uh, right. The grappling gets me in. Yeah. Right. And then I can double attack you, which is so good. So yeah, I was, I was in the spot. Um, yeah. So that's why I attacked you here with that. And I drew into a breather, which stunk. Uh, if I had gotten the defense there, that would have made all the difference because I could have uh, defended both of these attacks that you just threw at me. So when you came over here, you didn't have any defense? I did not. Did you no. have another attack when you backed off? I did not. I would have oh, thrown it Oh, you would have killed did. me. You would have killed me. Yeah, I would have <laughs> thrown so it scared. I, I had the adversity. I had the adversity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dang. And then when you like came over here, you did like a turn of double maneuvering. I think there was another opportunity if you just came in sooner. Like I didn't have like defenses or not good ones at least like just a faint or something yeah. i was terrified you had at that point we were kind of playing the probabilities game and yeah. you had like really good odds to yeah happen. yeah 
But I had trash. I double maneuvered. I got like this. Uh, yeah. My hand was this. Oh, dude, this game was. I didn't even crazy. have defense. You could have just came in and killed me. So, when? when was this? Um. So I backed up here. You double maneuvered. I double maneuvered here. Is here. That it? Right there. Yep. When I went here, you could have just came in and smacked me, and I'd die. I maneuvered into a knee. You could have killed me with a blind boosted knee. I could have killed you with a blind boosted knee. But yeah, you'd have to I, boost But that was in. my only defense. If yeah. you had defense, I would have totally lost. Exactly, yeah. But I was so scared that you were just going to boost in and kill me. Yeah. <laughs> the, the reason I don't think here. I did that... Then I went the, over or here. The reason I didn't do that is because I still had a shot of winning normally, yes. I guess. Like, there's always a threat... Of like if i'm going to lose this game it's why like daredevil um can beat bigfoot of like i'm losing this game so then he just plays kind of blind boost like and he if you if bigfoot or jackalope jackalope being the big one faints it he takes four over the top he's almost dead right yeah. uh, if he doesn't faint it he takes two over the top and you get a cycle right mm -hmm. so like daredevil when he has no qualms is pretty scary but here i felt like i had it because i got what three four cycles off it was nuts yeah dude and you were down to no cards in deck right or one card like at one point i was at one card which <laughs> i actually didn't want to get down to because of this because you had the health differential so yeah. you could have afforded to take uh five three i think deal five because uh, we were at like five three or something you could afford to take you you can because you can boost it after seeing what it is right you can like craft what value it is and be like oh, i guess i'll take four and you'll take four and then die on my turn right so, right i didn't want that actually it was just crazy dude this, this matchup is so dynamic much more so than much. i originally thought insane I will dude say. And then back over here, you had still a chance to win with the blind boost if you hit the three, right? It brought me down yep. to one. Yep, yep, yep. Wow. Oh. And I, I felt like I had to go in there um, and either hope you didn't have two sixes. Um, I had a knee, right? So some healing off of that could be nice. But I was at, I was at three. three so um, if you smack me with a six and I hit two threes, I still died to the next six. Um, if I was at four, I would have done that in a heartbeat before I maneuvered again and then realized my hand count was not at where I needed it to be. But yeah, crazy. Wow. Good crazy. games, man. So close. Yeah. Before you went to the turret, um, which was a great call on your part before you went to the turret and you were debating attacking me, I had a grappling in hand and the top card of my deck was this. So if you attacked me with a six, I throw a grappling and I actually full block it. Oh. And I get rid of this garbage. And then garbage. you can go over to the turret and zap me. Because, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I would have used, I absolutely would have done that. Move to maneuver and zap you. Mm -hmm. Would have been like a sweet play. So, yeah. Anyway, crazy, crazy <laughs> stuff. Dude, this what map too. Game. What a good map for this matchup too. Oh, yeah, dude. The I tokens. honestly, well, honestly, I think you're right um, that you bring it up like, I mean, now that we're looking at it, right, if you're recurring feints and you're drawing feints, that's what happened to me last game, right? That first shuffle after I got the feint back in, I top decked it. Oh, wow. Um, so that was like, you know, really good for me. Yeah. And so it was such two very different games, right? Um, and so that was last game. This game, though, you weren't seeing your feints. So it was a much different game. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Um, you were seeing a lot different defenses, right? I was seeing all my feints, but you were actually seeing ro reprograms and this and the five. So like, yeah, the damage was found differently. But I, to what you mentioned when you were like, actually, I'm pretty scared yeah. um, of this matchup. Um, like if you had, hadn't been able to get this, right? Like it was GG. Right. Uh, and I got and it because like, of the token, the item token. Exactly. So, and I daredevil in on any other map other than the item tokens can basically make sure you never get that yeah um because he's not ever attacking with i mean he's not going to attack with the three if he can't blind boost it just to run the risk of giving you healing mm -hmm. right exactly so yeah, yeah it's crazy game super dude. dynamic I, I mean obviously i wish the end result had been better but i kind of don't because those games were so amazing yeah you know, i'm, I'm really, really happy happy with Whatever I'm happy with result. how different it was each game. So it just really shows how dynamic this matchup Dude, is. Dude, this would be one that I would play like a lot. It's so fun. Like. It was so I, much fun. Every now and again, I find some matchups that I really like. Like Moon Knight Bigfoot. I do enjoy oh, yeah. that one a lot too. Great one. Um, I'll take the Moon Knight side most of the time. Yeah. Now. Uh, but this one is one where I'd be like, 
you know, or at least for the Gen Con thing, like I might throw this out to someone. Oh, dude, and like, if no, if people don't have experience with this one, they're gonna I think be you win either time. side, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's so fun. Wow, yeah. yeah. I went a little crazy with blind boosting early, but it actually paid off for me. Yeah, it's kind of like the whole jackalope idea, right? Where it's like, okay, you faint, you take damage. You don't faint, I get my cycle. So it's like a win-win. Exactly. Like yeah, the jackalope. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, and, oh, dude, that's. Oh, I love Daredevil. I actually <laughs> enjoy Winter Soldier too. Yeah, he's not bad. He's not bad actually. Um, yeah. So, what do you think? Does, is it favor either side? I actually don't know if I. I would have originally said Winter Soldier favored, but you brought. I mean, you brought up some good arguments of some just like just some solid points of like okay like if you're actually fainting everything and stopping daredevil cycles you're taking a ton of damage so you can't do that mm -hmm. that's 10 damage then you've got boxers to worry about and through adversities assuming all those happen you're at two health left and you're not getting healing right yeah. so like you i mean that's horrible right like you gotta really worry about that mm -hmm. um and you can't really afford to throw these early because i think daredevil loves card draw extra card draw. oh yeah especially if you're on a map like this so i would say on pretty neutral map i'd say it's pretty even if not maybe a little daredevil favored yeah but on a map where i can exploit being able to attack you from range um and kind of throw this and not have to worry about like grappling mm -hmm. getting you adjacent mm -hmm. um just because of the existence of this spot um was really nice but i'm i don't even know because like we had talked like daredevil has the initiative right daredevil has to approach but i just chose to go here on the turns that i was just double maneuvering because I basically said you don't get to do anything on your game plan without yeah. coming to me. So yeah. it kind of worked out, right? Right. For me, like the pocket, yep. because it's central, right? Yeah. I think if there are pockets that are like off to the side, I don't think uh, Winter Soldier cares. Right. So, yeah, I think this is a good Daredevil map, but it's still, man, it's still hard to say. I think it's pretty even overall. Dude, yeah, I was, map. yeah so fun very dude cool, very cool. Who, who recommended this one uh i don't remember i'd have to go back and look but whoever oh, did dude. thank you thank you to yeah, the patron who voted you. this one it was a really good actually this is so <laughs> fun yeah yeah and it's so cool to see the deck counts get so tiny and then they boost back up like mainly daredevil gets really low and then gets a big boost back up yeah. winter soldier kind of just keeps a continuous like mid level of cards in deck usually but it's just really cool to see the altering deck counts back and forth and it, uh, it's so weird I, I did see, yeah, I, uh, the early, uh, I got back up to like 11 or something. Yeah. Which is like half my deck. Yeah, That's yeah, insane. for real. It's actually half. <laughs> and what's cool is, for the most part, right, I wasn't able to like breather some of these and, and get some of my stuff back, but I had like a pretty solid like cycle, right? I was working with these cards, so I was really happy. Obviously, I'd prefer to have these like at the bottom, like, here you yeah. know like you did yeah. which is really nice but at least your feints you at least they're three cycles. boost right and your feints were like buried so yep it's yep. better the than faint boost, i'd say yeah i will take that all day especially with the healing since yeah. it was actually looking like i was gonna die right right um and then uh yeah I, I was pretty happy with this cycle because also like you couldn't afford to double attack most turns yeah so I didn't I didn't have to worry about that too much. And then the grapplings, right? Grapplings huge, are huge, huge in the Winter Soldier. Yeah. So both to I, both to close the gap for approaching and for backing off away from double attack turns. I just in in most games where Daredevil starts getting off all these cycles, it's just it feels really rough for the opponent, right? And they're like, okay, like now I he could just I, run, yeah, right? right? Like it, it feels really rough. But this match, it's not like that at no. all. We're both <laughs> recurring tactically right for yeah things it was so fun yeah i'd highly for anyone in chat or they're watching the stream i would recommend playing this one even maybe on this map this map was so the tokens all add value and oh it's so fun yes yeah i would fun. definitely uh echo that try it out if you like these characters even if you don't like these characters you might be surprised like this is a great matchup for them so it yeah. was a blast so yeah. well thanks chad for playing as always it was super fun man
Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. This yeah. is this is a blast as always. I guess we'll put it to the official. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Seems well, good. next time, hopefully, we can get some Black Panther in there, or Black Widow, or both. Oh maybe. yeah, either of those. <laughs> Honestly, I I really love this set. Yeah. Um, and I know I know this guy's seen some heat, but. I think we kind of showed here that he is pretty squishy if, oh, yeah. you're, if you have a way to find the damage, mm -hmm. um, which is the goal, right? You got to you gotta find the damage. And so John recognized that he has to kill me rather yeah. than let me play my thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think he's in a fine spot. Yeah, I do too. But yep. more testing. Well, thanks again. More testing, but yeah, good games, man. Um, I'll see you next time then. Yeah, all right. All right, see ya. All right, chat. Thank you for watching. Uh, that was matchup of the month for June. Super fun matchup. Try it out um, if you haven't already. And uh, looking forward to the next one. Hopefully we can see more King and Country because this set is just the best Marvel set. Hands down. That's my opinion. But um, it's just I've been having a blast. So much fun. So thank you all for watching. And we will catch you next time. All right, there you have it, guys. That's going to do it for matchup of the month for June. And as you can see, it's a very close matchup and super, super fun. It was honestly one of my favorite matchups that we've done so far. And that was very surprising to me because I've only played Daredevil like twice in my entire life. And uh, same thing with Winter Soldier, especially because he's one of the newer fighters. But he was the one I was most... Uh, I should say least interested in uh, out of King and Country so I've kind of been neglecting him so I really haven't played these fighters and they both have a similar play style but that play style is going infinite which oftentimes you can do against other fighters but you can't do it when your opponent can also do the same thing right so you got to switch up your game plan and actually try to kill your opponent and it's just really cool to see that style of play, that um, flip of the switch, so to speak, with these characters. So it was just a ton of fun, and uh, I definitely highly recommend you try this matchup out because it was a blast. So thanks to Chad for playing, as always, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can cast your vote for matchup of the month for future episodes, uh, as well as some other cool perks at different tier levels. So please check out the Patreon. The link is in the description below. And I just appreciate the support from everybody, and I can't wait for the next episode in the series. So looking forward to it. But that's going to do it for this one, everybody. So thank you all for watching. I'm Zero Skater 12, and I'll see you next time.